what is going on everybody my name is Mehul and welcome to your fifth Android application development tutorial in which I'm gonna discuss about something known as activities in Android and uh, actually I wanted to discuss about activities and activity life cycle in this tutorial so starting off with activities well what activities are well actually activities you can say that activities are pretty much pages of a book if your application is a book then activities are its pages well a book is of no good without pages unless it's Kindle well anyways so what activity means is that <clears throat> it is sort of a page which you could present to your user and you could just throw off your user from one page to another as well using some button or some event or you know whatever and you could just pass on the data as well from one activity to another so think of an activity like a page of your book and you would probably be able to relate it <clears throat> so what this main activity means right now is that this is the first activity which would be launched whenever your user starts the application so what happens is that Android gives you a lot of control over each and every point whenever Android considers that you could add some sort of functionality or some sort of behavior so I have googled it and I found this image right here which describes pretty much in an ugly way how activity life cycle is there so each activity has a life cycle well obviously if this activity is right now active it won't be active forever on the user's page it's not your home screen or even anything else because you would user would eventually just go to just press the back button or just exit your application anyways or if you just try to hang your application deliberately Android would automatically kill your application without any mercy so what this life cycle means is actually it says that when you tap on your application for the first time that means your application is not open in the background so what happens is that on create this on create function is called now when this on create function is called your application has not pretty much initialized even it is in a state of starting so on create is like you are waking up from a sleep you are not active actually but you know what what is happening you are under control then on start on start means that you are pretty much awake a little bit so you can restore your previous state you remember that where you sleep where are you sleeping right now or you know how much time it has elapsed since you are sleeping so on start pretty much means like that then on restore instance I guess where is it I guess it's not in this figure so what on restore instance is that it restores your previous state like if you have you know if you have unsaved data for your application like your application is a form and you have somehow managed to save data when the user was closing your application will learn about that later on so on restored restore instance it would run so that you could just restore a state if needed then on resume would finally this function right here would resume your application and now your activity that particular activity is running or in other words it is kind of visible to the user so <clears throat> the next thing is that what happens like somebody is browsing your application and uh, a phone call comes in between so what happens is that Android would immediately take over and instead of you know giving priority to your applications activity it would just show the user phone call so in that case what happens is that on pause or on pause function is called well this on pause functions means that your activity is actually you know it's it is still kind of in control but it is partially partially visible so that it could be like 
if you are you know browsing if you your user is browsing their application and their battery is about 15 percent so android gives a notification in a pop-up type that uh, connect to a charger so in that case your activity is you know disturbed in between so android would automatically call this on pause function so that you know you do not lose any sort of data you were transmitting in between or you know you just know that something has happened to your activity in between that made your app activity kind of out of you know out of scope out of touch out of you know it is just partially visible user cannot actually interact with your activity but actually can see it then we have this on save instance state now what this means is that your activity is kind of closed so it is no longer visible that means that your activity is kind of you know you have switched activities with intents which we are gonna look at later on what intents are well that's how pretty much unsaved instance state works it just works when your activity is no longer visible that particular activity obviously for which so Whenever this things happen, your activity is in a paused state. Then on resume would be the function whenever your activity is back to, you know, your activity is back to activeness. So your activity is still visible again. This on resume function is called and your activity is again in a running state. Then from paused itself, what could happen is that user stops your activity or Android stops your activity. Then what happens is that on stop function would be called well this on save instance shouldn't be here on stop would be called and uh, on stop after on stop your application is stopped now when your application is stopped this on destroy function or the process killed is called as well well this function is not always called you should not rely on this function because this on destroy would be only called when android is happy with your application or there is no some sort of memory management going on or android is not busy because android can forget to call this on destroy and it is not a bug it is actually the way it is because on destroy is kind of meant to clear up things and not you know just put important stuff which you want your application to perform when it is destroyed now once this happens your application goes out of scope immediately and uh, it is destroyed so that is how pretty much how life cycle of an application or an activity in Android works and don't overwhelm yourself with all of that information this is kind of not really important at all you would learn it yourself when you would start coding applications and you would make use of these all these methods and uh, one method right here you can see in main activity .java is that this is protected void on create the same method listed right here so this on create would be called whenever your application is kind of starting when you are kind of waking up from sleep so this is when this method would be called so that's all pretty much for this tutorial and from the next tutorial onwards we would be probably starting off with some coding stuff and would be coding some awesome android applications and i don't know why the heck this is always kind of goes in a minimized state from a maximized one automatically so if any of you have a solution for this just let me know and uh, that's pretty much it for this tutorial and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching